ankle fractures, ankle fracture and driving. The return to normal baseline breaking time is about nine weeks after surgery. And remember, for total hip, it's about six weeks. And for long bone fractures and periarticular fractures of the lower extremity, the breaking time is significantly reduced up to six weeks after initiation of weight bearing. How about diabetes? I think the first thing you're going to do in diabetic patient is to see if the patient have peripheral neuropathy, if the patient have a charco, Diabetic patients have a high risk of infection, of hardware failure, of delayed healing. The bone takes long time to heal. So what you're going to do, you're going to do more fixations or percutaneous fixations. A lot of screws from the fibula to the tibia. So what does it do? It gives you more strength of the fixation because the screws are engaged into the tibia, so they are stronger than the small little screws in the fibula. And then delay weight bearing, time and a half more than normal. So usually you delay the weight bearing for about three months. Just remember, surgery in displaced fracture of the ankle in diabetics is better than no surgery but the complication rate are high. Ankle male union. Usually the fibula is short and male reduced and the syndesmosis is disrupted. And usually you correct that by corrective osteotomy of the fibula to restore the fibular length, alignment, and rotation. In addition to syndesmotic reconstruction, you're going to do an atomic correction of the fibula and the mortis. You're going to do the plating of the fibula and bone graft if needed, in addition to syndesmotic reconstruction. And you do that ankle reconstruction to prevent arthritis by reducing the talus to the ankle mortis. A fibular fracture and unstable ankle mortis will allow the talus shift and one millimeter shift of the talus would decrease the tibio contact area 42%. What are the fracture variants? Mesonave fracture. It is fracture of the proximal fibula with syndesmotic disruption. You can miss this fracture because you may think the patient have an ankle sprain especially if the injury of the deltoid ligament is not apparent on the x-rays. You probably need to get long leg films to diagnose that fracture. So you need to fix the syndesmosis because in this patient the syndesmosis is disrupted. So you need to restore the fibrillar length and alignment before insertion of the syndesmotic screws. Accurate reduction of the syndesmosis is needed. What is Volkmann fracture? It is a fracture of the posterolateral aspect of the tibial attachment of the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. What is the low fracture? It is Salter fracture type 3. It is a fracture of the tibial attachment of the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament in the young. What is Wagstaff fracture? It is a fracture of the medial part of the fibula when that part is avulsed at the insertion of the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament and this ligament remain intact. Chaput tubercle fracture it is fracture of the anterolateral part of the tibia in adult. 
it is similar to Delo fracture. Chaput is different than Chopart fracture, which is mid tarsal joint injury. So the ligament remain intact in Telo, in Wagstaff, in Chaput fracture, but it is evolved from the tibia in Telo in the young, Chaput in adult, and is evolved from the fibula in Wagstaff. Bosworth fracture dislocation. It's a rare fracture of the ankle. The fibula becomes trapped behind the tibia and becomes irreducible, and the posterolateral ridge of the distal tibia will block reduction of the fibula. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.